some things here. And I wanted to share some of it with you. Everything that I have made lately that's not promised or spoken for, I brought today. And uh, this is about the ironwork that I've done kind of here lately. And the way I'm going to do this, I thought maybe we'd have a drawing of everybody in the room. <laughs> I don't know about half of you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> but I thought a better way to do it was to, kind of, to kind of take it as I became acquainted with you and what you meant to me and probably as close to a sister as I have, is Mary King. Uh -oh. so, <laughs> and I want you to come up here and pick something out of this, of this pile of iron, okay? A blacksmith's legacy is that after he's gone, the dust settles, the few pieces of iron with his initials in it may be the only thing left. You can take your time. I'll start from the other <laughs> But there's barbecue forks, ladder openers, hooks, a lot of hooks. They're all a little bit different. And uh, she already has a troll cross, right? She does. She does have a troll cross. Uh, let's see here. So. Mary was the first friendly face when I came to SHP. The rest of them just kind of walked around me and they didn't know who the hell I was. <laughs> Mary says, uh, you know these people are afraid of you. I said, <laughs> what people? <laughs> she said, all oh, these people. <laughs> I said, why? She goes, I don't know. You're not going to be a big teddy bear. <laughs> I said, well, let's don't tell <laughs> So. As the first pick, we do this when we shoot. The best shooter, the most important, is the first pick, and it goes down the line. So as we, we disperse the rest of them, you pick what you want, we'll go on to the next one. Okay? I will pick. Actually, that was the last thing I made. After I turned my foot over. <laughs> Okay. I came here from uh, Stephen Gross and Sons. Started out as a carpenter way back in the day. Worked mostly in Indiana. Gross came to Indiana and built a couple of jobs. And then the next job was back over here. So then I started working at State Ham Ball Jobs. You know? And uh, Mel Pike had told me, he said, Gary, you got to think about maybe coming to work for us. And I go, that's an old man's job. I, you know, I got plenty of muddy tracks to run before we get to that point. And so eventually I got broke down bad enough. My elbows hurt, my knees hurt, my back hurt. And uh, Ted Walker came to work for you. And he kind of lured me along too. And so I did come and it was part of a new push for uh, extended services, I guess. Because one of the first jobs we did was a Locust Corner job that Ron talked about. And I ended up out on the site for many of these jobs. I would get a trailer. I ended up being kind of the superintendent. I did all the pay applications. I did all the change orders and all that stuff from out there. And so most of you in here probably never ever saw me until the last six months. Because <laughs> I would always find a place to be, you know, even when it came to the construction managers. I'd take up residents in the end of one of their trailers or inside of a school building or something like that. Didn't feel, thought it made any sense to drive all the way to the office and then go back out to the job and back and forth. So you could concentrate on the job that you were on. And so while I know a lot of you probably thought, I never really knew this guy, I don't know who it is, but the people that I dealt with the most was our field services team. And Ron became head of that when Ted left. And we have, I don't know, we've developed a, a rapport over the years. We don't look like 
but uh, like Mutt and Jeff or whatever. We don't, we don't look like we belong together. Who's your fuck guy? Huh? Who's your fuck guy? Right. You know, there's a, there's a lot of differences between us, but when it came to construction and the way you go about things, there was nothing I couldn't tell Rob. I mean, I, I had to lie to people that I worked for someplace because they would blame me for everything. You know? I mean, the, the grosses. I mean, Mike's laughing here, but he knows what I'm talking about. You couldn't tell them the truth. You, know, you had to build buildings in spite of them. They were a good company. You got a good job when you were done, but they were shy about pointing fingers and making you the good scapegoat. Never, Ron never did that with me. I mean, we whatever we had, we could work through together. And uh, I would like to give you the second pick. Well, I'm honored that I'm right behind Mary. Uh, you'll always be right behind me. Uh, I'm going to cover up these two forks because you already got a fork. Yeah, I got it. So you don't get the pick from them. All right. Oh. Hey, Ron. I, yeah. Maybe now would be a nice time to share with everybody about what's happened. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. I mean, I can't do two things at once. I'll talk while you think. Yeah. yeah. I'll do. I'll be the dagger. <laughs> 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 or the prison ship. You know. Gary made one flaw, mailman too, and he retired, and he he thought it was a dagger. Right. <laughs> one for uh, Candy Sabo, so I need my own for her. <laughs> Candy was actually made out of a piece of the re-steel that came out of the, out of the Norwood Middle School building. So her and John both got a, something that was made from the, the grand old lady on the Sherman. Yeah, but those weren't letter were they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly, yeah. But, all right. So, um, what Lauren is referring to, we've been trying to keep somewhat under wraps as best as possible, but it's starting to leak out a little bit. This is a, as good a time as any. I'm, I'm glad that you get to do this when you're still here because oh, yeah. I was, there was perfect, perfect intro. So many of you know, uh, Gary has led the charge on access control for ever since I can remember, 20 years, 15 years. And- He's passionate or, about it. Yes, he is. And of course, when it's a problem, he pulls me in and won't let me go until we solve it. True. So um, we came up with a variety of solutions for this over the years, and Gary's very hands-on. We think we, he's probably got four or five door frames in his shop at home with different versions of what we did to try and solve that problem that we were kind of collaborating on. And it's developed into the E-frame detail that is now in our drawings. It's been in our drawings. Sometimes gets thrown out of our drawings, but. Um, that that whole effort was kind of something that Gary and I worked on, um, you know, over the years, and just continued to refine. And I think it's it's a it's a pretty good solution. But um, I know the frustration with this was we could get, never get anybody to do it the way we wanted, the way we drew it. And then you know everybody's got a better idea. Now we've got the better idea. Right. So um, it was last about a year ago now. Uh, Gary had actually gone to a class up in near, near Chicago, up in Indiana, Northern Indiana, or Illinois. Oh, that's not an important detail. No, it was actually oh. not now. <laughs> it's part of the context. Don't come back. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so he comes back from this Just class. Just say it once. Yeah. Right. He comes back from this class. It was all on door hardware and told me that one of the guys in the class had. Uh, taking a real interest in what Gary was explaining about what we were doing. Cut to the chase, we had a conversation, and in that conversation, a new idea was born about how to solve our door frame, door frame problem. And uh, so we've been working on that for the last year, just about, and have developed a uh, product. It's, it's basically a box, an electrical box that sits in a door frame and is set up for the piping that then can allow, it creates basically the E-frame drawing that we've got, but it's through a product that we've invented. This product has actually been uh, developed over, over time and we've now, we've applied for a patent. So that patent application was uh, put in place about uh, 
three, two or three months ago. It takes about a year to get a patent. But we are in the status of patent pending right now, which now allows us to move forward with developing the idea and actually going to you know, manufacture. Um, two or three weeks ago, Lauren doesn't even know this, I don't think, we actually hired an industrial designer to take our, our design, which Tim Goodale has been <coughs> instrumental in helping us develop over the last year. He's done an amazing job in Revit doing this thing, getting this thing. We've got probably 10, 15 versions of this box printed in 3D by 3, 3D printer. But we finally got to the point where we're like, we're ready to go to manufacturing. We realized, realized we needed special expertise, someone that understood how to get it into that manufacturing uh, world. So we hired an industrial designer Got, I just got the first, uh, what I'm hoping to be pretty much a, pretty much a final print of what, what we're going to manufacture. Um, and uh, as soon as that's approved, we'll be going, we've got a, a manufacturer lined up and start uh, producing these things in a, in a small batch right now to make sure we've got a market interest. Um, I showed it to a couple of electricians, they thought it was brilliant and uh, are they just said, they were, as soon as I showed it to them, they were like, you can't believe how much nightmare these things are trying to get these things to work. And explaining to them how it worked, and it was like, this looks like a great idea. So we are really excited about it, and it is a, um, Gary and I are the co-inventors, and both of our names are on the patent. Um, it is owned by SHP. So uh, as that goes, so, so goes the firm. And uh, I'm hoping by the end of the year, first of the year, We'll actually have some product in hand that we can start pushing on job sites and uh, um, getting this thing rolling. And then we'll, once we do that, we can build a market. We can either just start selling them or sell it to somebody. And <coughs> again, that's a value proposition. Happy with your choice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. All right. All right. Good. So, like I said, Ron, he's had, a, he's had a barbecue fork about 10 years ago, and about three or four years ago, I made him a spatula. Well, I didn't make it for him, I had it in a group of stuff, and he says, can I take this home and see if it matches my fork? Because as you can see, there's different ways of doing things. You turn this way, that way. And uh, he came back and he said, it's exactly like my fork. It's got the same length of handle. The twist is going the same way. And I can't believe it. It's, it's just this, but the thing of it is, the spatula has a little curve in the handle. And he said, but the fork doesn't. Why, why would it be like that? I said, Ron, it's sorry, hell, I don't know. Go. <laughs> There's no plan when you get done. So I go to his house. We had supper over there, you know. And I said, let me see that. And so, okay, this the fork is straight. The spatula has got a little curve in it. You see that? So I take the, the fork and I do this. <laughs> I said, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, they hang right together now. They're perfect. And so, I was looking around here. People showed up after I came. I had Donna Noodle on this list. Did she come? She's out. Jerry, Jerry told me that he was going to be gone. He's gone down to visit his daughter in, in Dallas. And we had a little conversation, so I took him in the back room and I let, I let him come. So now, Steve Shearer and I worked in Middletown together. He worked for Quando at the time. And uh, we ended up in the Hamilton program working together because I, I think I kind of brought you here. I think they paid me some money for things here. <laughs> Maybe that's why you're leaving. <laughs> Could be. But you're next. Come up and pick from the booth. Come on down. 
And if you want me to put a little extra, yeah. <laughs> I can do that. Well, it doesn't have to match anything. It doesn't have to match anything. That's the trouble when you, build, when, you, when you build one thing and you don't take any dimensions, it's hard to make another one even close to the same. So I want to be able to go to my shop and build something. If you like it, I'll sell it to you. But don't be giving me, you know, I want to build a fence 100 feet long with all the same things. You like that? He has an artist that Everybody was taking pictures of all this too. We have it on film, right? Yes. Yeah. We need yeah. pictures. We can pull okay. those moments here. <laughs> and as we move down through it, Mary's mini me, Ashley, <laughs> came to the field department and also one of my favorites. So you're next. Well, I'm glad you still consider me since I'm not in CA anymore. <laughs> we didn't we didn't get rid of you. We just allowed the, the people with the money to. <laughs> 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 so, and then Audra, after Ashley went to the finance department, Audra came along and now she works with us. You don't have a troll cross, man. You know, not everybody gets a troll cross. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the nice stuff. Look at that. Don't you barbecue? Really? I do barbecue. Yeah, she wants to hang something up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I don't want to tell you what to do. Far be it for me. Huh? You want that? All right. And I don't know that I saw Vic. Vic, Vic is out. Yeah. He was taking his place as Pat Myers. Come on. Two vibes. I, I I don't know what to say other than they've left you the best stuff. Is it? Oh, did I give you? All right, he's already got one too. Uh, you'll see him at the Alzheimer's Center next month. <laughs> I don't remember all of this. I've written a lot of it. He down. has a list at home of who he's given. Yeah, he, he, made a, he made the spatula, 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 and the fork, and they actually they hang outside where uh, I live in Charleston now. For a, and you can grill. All year round. <laughs> oh, rub, it rub it in. Well, no. You mean on the back of the boat? It's on <laughs> both, both, both of his utensils have a nice patina of steak on them. Now, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. But going into that, I brought something for Gary from Charleston that there's a gentleman that just passed away down there, and his name is Phillips, Philip Simmons. And he is a famous blacksmith. And Charleston is known for their wrought iron gate work, ornamental work, and wrought iron. So a couple weeks ago when Ron called me about coming, I said, this and you are one and the same. So enjoy these. It'll be great oh, reading. Awesome. There's sketches in them. The ironic part about this is the high school and elementary and middle schools that were just built and they're like from here to the bridge away from my house are named Philip Simmons High School after this gentleman. And his work is featured throughout the through entire, the through the school, wow. the colors of the embers, the whole nine yards. And this gentleman is looked upon in Charleston as being a god. Now he just passed away recently before I got down there but I knew that you would enjoy both of these books about him. And there's also some DVDs, but I just thought, you know, old school books. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks anyway. You need us to hang them on here so you can hang it like this. Uh, you made one of those, aren't you? <laughs> 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 I appreciate the thought though. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Can I, give you, can I give you a couple bucks? Or no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just come to Charleston. When's your birthday? 
December 20th. Oh, wow. Perfect. Go visit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got nothing else to do here. Yeah, yeah. go visit. <laughs> ask, ask Ron, how, what's Charleston like? It's sweet. It's, it's sweet. really yeah. sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet both of you. We got three you're, you're telling me you can't use them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank Thank you. you. I was thinking maybe you can get a present now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So, what did she get? Who are you looking for? Rar. She just left. She just left. You can't do that to her. She's out. You can ask her all the time. She has to leave. I'm saying this one. Has, has she given her a fortune? I can't believe this is the last thing on the table. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you may have already given her a fortune. No. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, <laughs> I would remember that. Okay. <laughs> All right, Lauren for being Lauren gets that. There you go. All right, we'll just lay it on her desk. She told me she said she said she had to leave. She's really jumping at it. Probably just as well because the students have been slow. Okay. All right. <laughs> Where's May? She gone? She had to be. She's out. <laughs> She's <gone. laughs> I, I get, was going to give Carly and Maggie to throw us. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. She's coming back. Are you oh, back? Right. Yeah. 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 He said you're, you're out, but then he's famous for you. He's famous for So you can't, you have to take what I give you now. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> this is it. See, this, this is my stuff. I stole my stuff. <laughs> 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 Meg's gone. I need someone who is a Leo. A Leo. And Therese. And Leo. Who? Karen. Who else? You're going to have to leg wrestle for it. Susan. I've got one. Susan. Pick a number. Susan's a Leo. Yeah, I think pick a number. Who is? Pick a number. Susan. Susan's a Leo. Pick a number. How many are you? One, two, three. There's like four of us. So Mary's going to decide. <laughs> she does everything here. One, two, three, ten. Pick a number. Go. Eight. Three. Are you eight? No, no. Oh. Karen, who else? Therese and Karen. Therese? Therese? Four. Number was seven. Amy was eight. There you go. Amy. This may weight you down. <laughs> Since I already gave Carly one, I guess I'll have to save this for me. And Bill Davis never showed? I'm standing right here. Huh? I'm standing right here. How long have you been there? You just Since get her? No. Since 4 o'clock. <laughs> Since 4 o'clock, that was me. You missed the whole mound steel story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. You did. I said, I you got, got, spot, you I got, got out of mass I got, with I got one. I got one for you. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get this untied. Take it apart. I can't do it. Here. Pass. Put it apart. What do you got, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> now, you can buy a coffee cup, but you can't make it. And I know I'm just a dumb iron worker, but I might be smarter than I look. According to Ron, you are. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sis, I've been metal. What's your superpower? <laughs> Look at that girl. I had a It yeah. yeah. says my name, and my GJ, and the date, and my Emmy. Yes. Very nice. I can't make a coffee cup. You're right. I, I can't make a coffee cup either, but I. Here's your troll drop. Right. Elves, trolls, Democrats, and all manner of evil. So, I think I'd like to 
three things left. Yeah. And I'm going to give this one to Cindy. Aww. <laughs> It was kind of funny about some of this stuff. I'm out in the barn. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I need to make some stuff because I want to. I want to give some stuff to people. I'm picking stuff up off the floor. Old street <laughs> Oh, good. That's the end of a <laughs> uh, You know, this piece here was a fork at one time when it was cut off like that, and I made that little two prong hook out of it. And it was kind of a. I don't know. You pick it up and you see what it wants to do, and that's what it is. So if you see something you like. You're next. Am I allowed? Sure, you are. Yay! I'd be happy that you did. So I, if that was the last thing picked, I would be sad because that was one of my better things. Thank you. Okay. So, as it gets down to it, since we did have some dropouts in the show, I've got no two. How are we going to do this? Huh? I'm thinking. Phil, because he's been my Mac buddy. <laughs> he, he stands with me when all the rest shun me. <laughs> You're a long lost. <laughs> he also was a brainchild behind this whole yes. thing today, too. Yes. Oh, there you go. Yes. Go, Phil. And my at it, he kept coming up my desk and I had a kind stuff. Something was up, but I, I really didn't have any idea. I, I, all I can say is, for the last ten years, he said, "When I leave, don't throw me no parties." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, "If it makes you happy, go ahead." Uh, <laughs> so another part of the gift was John offered to give me his Christmas tree. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, really? <laughs> but the thing that happened, he had researched that, and then I took the box of info that Gary, he was gone from 6.30 in the morning till 10 that night. He was only awake 15 minutes, and all I could talk about was that power hammer. Yeah. <laughs> and I, so I called and said, that's the one he wants. He yeah, won't no, be I, happy. It weren't that great. He won't be happy with the other one. Stuff. So I, I didn't even know you knew what you there, wanted. There was, there was one a pamphlet underneath the coffee table. I picked it up and looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gary, John talked to them. Then he sent me the purchase agreement on my phone, which then I had to copy it into the computer, to delete the computer pictures and stuff, because you would see, and I couldn't pay for this with our checkbook or credit card, so I got into his pension money. <laughs> you haven't looked in there to see that it's missing. <laughs> so, so anyway, and you have a new pension check that I've cashed, but I didn't want to give it to you because I wanted to capture money. You know? yeah, I always put it in there. Oh, all the secrets go down. So this has been so hard to keep this a secret. So hard. <laughs> Well, because he told me that day, too, if, if I had my building done, I'd go back up there and get it tomorrow. So you yeah. knew. I was you afraid know. he was going to. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little longer to go to Minnesota than it would be back to Troy. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so after Sunday was over, I would kind of lost the house. Yeah. But, so this is another part of the. Yeah. That's why John had to be here. Yeah. Well, and John, I'm not giving him anything because he makes stuff better than me. <laughs> <laughs> this guy right here, though, is Gary Reeves, and we started out as puppies together at Roy Miller and Son down in uh, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. And I thought this morning, if I could find this piece that I had made a while back, I'm going to give it to him. I'm not, I didn't know he was coming here today, but I, I, I put it in my pocket. And what this is, you know what it is, right? <laughs> Aww. This wasn't part of the plan. This wasn't part of the plan. No. This wasn't part of the plan. You know what that is? This is a Simon's key that we put forms together with at the times that we were carpenters and rough carpenters and concrete carpenters and whatever else. This was what pins it all together. So, in my old age, I'm going to find every one of these I can if I make a bottle opener out of it. So, <laughs> spread this out, take a ball pin hammer right there. And I think, is there any way that we can try this out after a while? All right, there you go. We just finished that. Actually, a better thing should be build it down. <laughs> You're probably right. Thank you, Gary. Here you go. I don't know what else to say. Thank you all very much. Look at that blue man. Give me a drink. Of it. Thank you. All.